With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? Well, this one I call the Songbird of Santa Fe. All the way from the Rio Grande, we'd been running in the signs of the festival, passing wagons covered with bunting, filled with grinning grown-ups and kids. By the time we reached the plaza of the town, we were stirrup to stirrup with hundreds of roistering cowpunchers and hard put to avoid crowding into the happy people on foot. But California and I weren't in Santa Fe for the fiesta. We were there because of a promise, a solemn promise made to a dying man. Yeah, better get set, Destro. He's coming this way. Sure it's the right man? All I know is what I heard. And I heard this fella ask how to get to Mac Kiley. Which hotel he go to? The Grand. Good. One thing, though. He don't look like no jeweler. Oh? Who was on the desk? Charlie Gilson? Yeah. That was the one who handed out the directions. As soon as I heard this fella ask for Mac Kiley. You gave it to him, right? Water Street, I told him. Next to Magoon's Cooperage. Well, I guess this is what we've been waiting for. Our man with the ring. Well, I've done my job, so I'm leaving. Now, wait a minute. Hmm? You said this man didn't look like a jeweler. What does he look like? A range rider. He's a big fella, dressed all in black. He's wearing twin guns. Is there anyone with him? Yeah, another puncher. He called a big fella uh, Hoppy. <laughs> Hoppy, huh? You were right about him being no jeweler. You know him, Destro? Heard of him? It's probably Hopalong Cassidy. And if it is, he knows how to use those guns. Yeah? Would you say he's faster than I am? I wouldn't want to bet, Camden. Either way. Maybe we'll find out. If he hands over that ring, he gets nothing but smiles. And if not? If not, we burn him down. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and the Songbird of Santa Fe. A rendezvous with trouble. This seems to be the trap that has been baited for Hoppy in California. In Santa Fe, because of a promise, surrounded by festivity and intrigue, they stand at the bar of the Grand Hotel, drinking sarsaparilla. Ah, it's good stuff, isn't it? Um, well, I don't know, Hoppy. There are times when I could do with something just a little stronger. <laughs> <laughs> and with all that <coughs> trail dust in my throat... I... Never mind about that. You drink this and you'll feel better tomorrow morning. Yeah, 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 I guess you're right. Uh, Want to go? Yeah, we'd better. I've been here quite a while and I'd like to get this job off my hands. Come on, uh, I'd like to see some of that excitement outside anyway. Hmm, look at all them people. Quite a crowd, all right. Do you like walking? With these heels, sir, I'm willing to walk just as far as my heart. And that's all. <laughs> all right. Well, I never saw anybody so set on going from place to place sitting down. If you were ever to... Son uh... of a smoking gun. Take a look over there. Where? What is it? That stagecoach. It just drove up next door. And look at what's getting out of it. Uh, let's, uh, let's get a little closer for a better view, huh? Oh, look at that. Ain't she something, Hoppy? She's a very pretty woman. Pretty? Why, she's beautiful. She's darn near as beautiful as that little paint filly we got out to the bar 20. <laughs> and that's really being beautiful, isn't it, California? Uh, who is she, Hoppy? I don't know, but... Uh... That's Lorraine Lachere, strangers. Lorraine Lachere. But she's a famous singer. That's right. Comes all the way from Paris. And she's here to sing at the new opera house. Well, I'm sure gonna be, uh... Hoppy. Look at her ogle year. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till 
the boys at the bar 20 here about this. Uh, oh. Uh, what happened? I dropped my tomahawk from out of my belt. Why do you still carry that thing? Oh, I just I just like it. Uh, got it from one of Bentro's raiders. I know where you got it, but I can't see why you still carry it. Oh, some fellas throw knives. I'd rather throw a tomahawk. And you think I can't do a good job? Huh. Watch. Hey! What are you trying to do? That's the fellow who was just talking to us. <laughs> and he thought I was throwing it at him. Son of a gun, look at him run. I don't wonder. You buried the thing three inches deep in that post, and he was leaning against it. Oh, he couldn't have gotten hurt. I wasn't aiming at him. Yeah, I better go get the tomahawk. You're drawing a crowd. Uh, yeah, sure, sure, Hoppy. Uh, well, what do you say we look the town over? Oh, back there at the bar, somebody said there was going to be a parade. Uh, how about us hanging around to see it? You see it. I'm going to deliver this ring. Here he comes, Destro. A big fellow wearing black. All right. You stand out in the balcony. If I say, stranger, you're making a mistake. Pump lead into him. Understand? I understand. Get out there. Here he comes. I'm looking for a man called uh, Kiley, Mac Kiley. Come in. What can I do for you? You're Kiley? That's right. You know of a jewelry drummer by the name of Rodney? Sure I know of him. Why? He came into Las Cruces about a week ago by stage. They'd had a run-in with some road agents and he'd been wounded badly. I helped the doc who probed the bullet. Just before he died, Rodney asked me to do him a favor. Wanted you to deliver a diamond ring to me? That's right. So here I am, and, uh... What's the matter? Something just occurred to me. If your name is Kylie, why would you have the initials A.D. on your belt buckle? Hmm? Well, simple enough. Uh, this buckle used to belong to a friend of mine. I'm wearing it as a keepsake. Ah, uh, no harm in that. I think I'll keep the ring a little while longer. Until I make sure I'm turning it over to the right man. And I'd prefer to have the ring right now. Sorry, you're going to have to wait for it. Stranger, you're making a mistake. But if you... <laughs> you're pretty rapid with those Colts, Cassidy. Next time, have your gunmen watch their shadows. Especially in the late afternoon sun. Man learns from his mistakes. Your friend won't learn anything. He went off the balcony. Hope he didn't get hurt in the fall. Camden can take care of himself. How about that ring? I figure that ring belongs to me. So let's talk business, Cassidy. I'm not interested in talking business of any kind. I look forward to avoiding you. Now you run into me. Stick around this town and you can't help it. Only next time, I'll be wearing guns too. <laughs> That fellow you're looking for. I uh, found him. He, uh, uh, hey, uh, what's the matter? I'm glad you had some luck. I ran into nothing but trouble. Someone tried to get the ring away from you? That's right. You say you found, uh, Mac Kiley? Yeah, yeah, he's right in the hotel here. Come on. Some place, eh? Huh? Carpets like walking in a mattress. And look at them fancy lanterns up in the ceiling. <laughs> they call those chandeliers, California. Which way? That big room over there. Uh, They've uh, been having some kind of doings, uh, and this Kylie's making a speech, and I heard him being introduced to the other folks. A lot of you remember when I first came here 20 years ago, a bricklayer from Philadelphia. I laid brick for a lot of your houses, and I ain't heard of one falling down yet. But... Not a one of you needs to thank me for building that opera house. I did it for my own pleasure. I happen to have a liking for pretty singing, particularly when it comes from pretty ladies. <laughs> so, this town now has an opera house, and I've had a lot of fun. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> Mr. Kiley... I wonder if you'd be interested in taking delivery on a diamond ring. Diamond ring? Who are you? The name's Cassidy. I happened to be with a man called Rodney when he died of a bullet wound. 
He asked me to bring the ring to you. Seems like it's pretty valuable. Valuable? I should say it is. And it's a gift for Miss LeCher. Do you have it with you? I promised Rodney I'd get a receipt for it. Send the receipt east. Well, then we'll need writing equipment. The clerk here will fix this up. Uh, Red, you got yeah. pen and ink I could use and a uh, uh, piece of paper? Yeah, sure, Mr. Carley. Right here. What's the chance of getting a room for the night, Red? Well, we're plumb full right now because of Fiesta. There's a room coming vacant at 7. Party leaving town on the last stage. I'll take it. Let's see. I'm going off duty for a while. Won't be on again this evening till 10, but I'll fix it with the other clerk. You come back at 7. Room be ready. What's your name? Cassidy. Yeah, and I'm Cassidy. much obliged. Hoppy. Hoppy. I think we got trouble. Four fellas. They've been easing in around us. And, uh, and here we are. Get them up, Cassidy. You too, Kylie. Sure. We'll get them up to your chin. Oh, good boy. Now let an Irishman get in there. Here, California, I'll take care of that one. Oh, well, well. That was a beaut. And there goes the last of them running away. <laughs> That's all right with me. Weather's a little warm for such acrobatics. How you doing, California? Hey, look at that eye. Well, I'm plumb glad you can look at it, because I ain't going to be able to look out of it. Not for a few days. Uh, no how. Yeah, let's see now. Uh, what were we doing when all this began? Uh, you were writing out a receipt. And if you're finished, I'll swap you the ring for it. I'm beginning to think this ring brings nothing but violence and death. Hello. What can I do for you? Would your name be California? No, I'm Hopalong Cassidy. They told me California would be in the hotel, and they told me he'd be in this room. Uh, California's my partner, but right now he isn't here. No? Any idea where he might be? Uh, last night he said he had some friends in town he wanted to look up. I felt pretty tired, so I came to the hotel and turned in. So you haven't seen your pal since last evening, huh? That's right. But why all the questions? Who are you? Tex Lambert, Deputy Marshal of Santa Fe. I'd like you to take a look at this tomahawk I've got here. All right. I'm looking. Your friend California was seen throwing a tomahawk yesterday in the plaza. Just missed a man by the name of Sam Lukes. Why, I guess California did throw it, but he didn't mean any harm. He wasn't aiming at the man. Take another look at this thing. A good look. Would you say it was the one belonging to your friend? Uh, yeah, it does look like California. But where did you get it? What's the point of all this? My point is the place where it was found this morning. All right. Where was it found? Right across the hall, room 32. This tomahawk was found alongside the dead body of Lorraine Lachere. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and the Songbird of Santa Fe. Fulfilling a promise made to a dead jewelry salesman, Hoppy has come to Santa Fe with a diamond ring, a fabulous engagement token for the beautiful French singer, Lorraine Lachere. But now, Lorraine lies dead in her hotel room, while Hoppy stares at a deputy marshal who seems to think that Hoppy's pal, California, is guilty of her murder. Ah, uh, wait a second. You aren't trying to say that California killed that girl. I'm saying she was killed with a weapon that belongs to California. What was he doing with a tomahawk, anyway? California and I got into a skirmish with some renegades a while back, and California took it away from one of them. He only carried it as a keepsake. Well, I don't know anything about that. But I'm going to have to find him and bring him in. You won't have any trouble finding California. I don't know about that. I've been looking all over town for him. But California didn't do it. Maybe you're right, and maybe you're not. Personally, I'm beginning to think he's as guilty as Lucifer. You couldn't be more mistaken. I'd like to have a look at that girl. Come along, then. The body is still in the room. Right where we found it. Here's the room. There she is, Cassidy. Yeah. Body right by the door. 
Seems he was struck while reclining on that settee by the window. What makes you think a tomahawk was the weapon used? Well, you see, as the doctor explained, that type of wound can be made by just such a weapon as a tomahawk. Anything else you want to know, Cassidy? I'm going to lock this room up till the coroner sees it. I guess I've seen enough. Don't try to leave town. We might want to ask you a few things, too. Don't worry, I'm sticking around till I find out who really did this. Sit down, Cassidy. Glad you came to see me. Quite a place you have here. Solid adobe. I set every single brick in it. Built like a bank. <laughs> you said it. Look, even has its own safe. Cassidy, I've been hearing things about you. Seems you've got quite a reputation through the Southwest. Man gets around, people get to know him. Understand you're pretty set on helping that friend of yours out of his trouble. California didn't commit that crime. You know, Cassidy, I don't think he did either. That's why I'd like you to do a job for me. What kind of a job? Get that diamond ring back for me. Ring? You mean you don't have it? No. That ring cost me $10,000, Cassidy. You know why I sent East for it? Well, it's the kind of ring a man would give to a woman. That's right. That's why I bought it, to give to a woman. I don't know whether you know it or not, but Lorraine, Lachere, and me were engaged to be married. I didn't know. I built that opera house for her, just so she could sing in it. Lorraine and I met in San Francisco six months ago, and when she promised to marry me, it was the greatest thing in my life. Now she's dead. And the ring? I gave it to her last evening. When they found her body, the ring was gone. I'd like you to get it back for me. Any idea where it might be? You need an answer for that question? That ring's worth a lot of money, Cassidy. But it means more than just money to me and the thought of Ace Destro having it. Who is this Ace Destro? What's his position in town? He's a gambler. What I hear, he hasn't been doing so well lately. He acted as though he had a right to that ring. Why? A few months ago, we ran a horse race here. I had a bet on it with Destro. Ten thousand. I lost. Right afterward, I found out that Destro had rung in a racehorse from back east. I see. I thought I was betting against a cow pony, so I wouldn't pay off. I suppose that's why Destro's been after the ring. Didn't happen to see him around the hotel last night, did you? Destro? I wish I could say yes to that. When I came in, I wasn't paying attention to anything. When I left, the only person in the lobby that I knew was Red Mason, the clerk. Maybe I'll get a chance to see Destro again. You might see him within the hour if you're going to the inquest. Nothing could keep me away. Ah, uh, Cassidy, one thing you might keep in mind. Destro likes to delegate his dirty work to hirelings. It's sometimes he takes a personal interest. When he does... He's got to be figured as the fastest man with a gun in this town. All right, all right. Let's get this inquest back the way it was. If you recall, Dr. Andrews testified that the time of Miss Lachere's death was sometime between midnight and 2 a.m. Now, Mr. Kiley, if you'll go on with your statement. Well, I came to see Lorraine, Miss Lachere, at about 8 o'clock. We just finished the cornerstone ceremony for the opera house. As you probably know, I set the inscription slab myself. Yes, we know that, Mac. Well, Lorraine and I had supper together, and then about 9 o'clock I left the hotel and went home. I didn't see anyone on the way, and I don't know that anyone saw me. So you'll just have to take my word for the time. Uh, there's no reason to take his word for anything. I think you should get back to the question of the diamond ring. Coroner, could I ask a question? Huh? Who are you, sir? Name is Lukes. I run cattle for Joe Lewis. Well, what was your question? I'd like to know if there's going to be a reward for capturing this fellow who threw the tomahawk. Why, you know where he is? Think I might. Leastwise, I saw smoke early this morning where you won't usually find it, coming from one of them old empty shacks on the other side of the river. The one that's half caved in right north of Foley's Wells. Hey! Hey, that was Cassidy! Stop him! He's going to walk the field with Where you been 
been staring out of that window. There must be something interesting out there, Camden. Yeah, nothing but sand and mesquite. What's it to you, anyway? I'm going to blast that old door. It won't stay shut. Leave it open. We can use a little air in here. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure getting tired of being holed up with a saddle tramp. Don't call me no saddle tramp. No. And you ain't going to get away with holding me like this. My partner... You and your partner. That's all I've heard. I've got a little score of my own to settle up with that partner of yours. You'll hear more about him, too. I didn't do no killing, and I'm willing to go back to town to face anybody who says I did. You'll go back when I'm good and ready to take you. Are you ready now, Camden? Hoppy! Will you? Hold it! Hoppy, this fellow shanghaied me. Brought me up from town so I could be blamed for killing. I know all about it, California. And now we're going back to town to straighten everything out. Cassidy, you've got Lambert with you. What's doing? I brought the marshal along to keep everything legal. All right, if we come in. Come in. Hey, you've got your pal California back. Where'd you find him? A couple of Destro's men had me, but Hoppy got me away. Shoot it out with him, Cassidy? I didn't have to. I had the drop on them, and they let us leave quite peacefully. Without saying a word. Them fellas sure changed their ways when they look at the wrong end of a gun. They was practically ready to sit up and beg. Glad you got away. Maybe Destro won't feel so fancy from now on. How about you, Marshal? Got any news on Lorraine's death? Quite a lot. Cassidy here figures he knows who did it. Good. Who, Cassidy? You, Kylie. Have you lost your senses? I loved that girl. I'm sure you did. But you love yourself more. And your pride couldn't take it when she told you she wasn't going to marry you. You lost your head and killed her. You're insane. Your pal killed her with that tomahawk. Oh, no. A tomahawk has a vertical blade. And Lorraine's wound was across the spine. That's why the doc thought she'd been hit while lying down. But she died instantly. And her body lay near the door. So she must have been standing up when she was hit. No, Kylie. That wound couldn't have been made by a tomahawk. But it could have been made by a brick hammer. And you had just come from setting a slab of some kind, hadn't you? You had your tool kit with you. You're trying too hard, Cassidy. Just because your pal's in trouble. You framed my pal, Kylie. You heard about his practicing with that Tommy Hawk, and you framed him. And you wanted me to work for you, so I'd be out of the way. How are you going to prove all this? Well, there's that diamond ring. You claim it was stolen from Lorraine's body. I've been figuring it might be in that safe of yours. That safe's locked. And it's going to stay locked. Get out of here, all of you. That'd be convenient, wouldn't it? We leave and you move the ring. You'll have to open the safe, Kylie. Either that or we'll blast it open. <coughs> we can do a little blasting on our own, can't we, Kylie? Destro. Don't make any wrong moves, Cassidy. You'll get yours that much sooner. Kill him, Destro. Nobody will hear it through these walls. So you two got together. You finally patched things up. That's right. We made a deal. You're in the way. Put a bullet in him now, Destro. Why wait? Do you know why he's waiting, Kylie? Because he thinks he's faster than any other gunslinger in the world. But I'm here, and that bothers him. It makes him want to prove he's faster than I am. And that's why you're going to holster that pistol and prove you're a better man. All right, Cassidy. Don't be a fool, Destro. Just kill him. There. I'm holstered, Cassidy. And I'm not waiting. Now, back to Hop Along Cassidy. Cassidy? How is it, Lambert? You played his weakness. The conceit that was in him. The great distral... Is he finished? He sure is. Deader than a side of beef. Yeah, Lambert. Let me wad this shirt against your shoulder. I'm going to... I'm going to be all right. But watch Kylie. Don't worry about Kylie. I got my gun on him. I know when I'm through, and I don't care anyway. Now that the girl's gone. But I'd like to know something, Cassidy. What turned the light on me? You lied at the inquest when you said you left the hotel at nine that night. 
Yeah. But how did you know? You said you saw the clerk on the way out. The red-headed one. I did see him. That I don't doubt. But it proves that you didn't leave until a lot later than you claimed. Why? Because that red-headed clerk went off duty that afternoon and didn't come on again until 10 o'clock that evening. You should remember that. He told me all about it in front of you. But I guess you were too busy thinking. That's right, he did. You're a smart one, Cassidy. Not smart, just lucky. Lucky that you weren't smart. The bricklayer's alibi sure backfired on him, but just as Hoppy figured, it proved he was the killer of the songbird of Santa Fe. Hoppy and California are in for a mighty weird experience in the Bayou country when a ruby, a murder, and voodoo prove that Bayou drums mean death. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Songbird of Santa Fe was written by Buckley Angel, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>